Welcome to the Atlanta Legacy Open sideboard. I'm Glenn Jones. I'm here with Greg Mitchell. Hey guys. Uh, Greg, you're playing in the Legacy Open. Mm -hmm. uh, you're playing a deck that is a little different. Reanimator, sort of. Uh, we featured you just now on SCG Live. Uh, did you win that match? I did. It felt well, good. Then I guess the viewers at home are going to need a walkthrough on what exactly was going on. Sure. So uh, this deck is called Tinfins. Uh, it started as a collaboration between me and some people on MTG The Source, okay. which is a great website for Legacy. So shoutouts to DK on The Source and Richard Cheese. Uh, they've been working on this deck since GP Atlanta uh, last year. That was a legacy GP here. Long history. Yeah. Um, so the the core concept of the deck is to animate Gristlebrand with Shallowgrave or Gorio's Vengeance to give it haste, and then swing in, draw 21 cards, and kill them in some way. Okay. Typically not that hard in legacy when you get a 21 card buffer. I mean, yeah, that, that's a help. <laughs> Um, so, uh, I think the really big innovation, uh, besides using Shallow Grave and Glorious Vengeance, uh, okay. was someone, some person, uh, suggested using Children of Coils, and at first we're like, no, that's terrible, it can't be good. But once someone actually tried it, it was insane. Like, you literally draw your deck as soon as you put Crystal Brain in play. It's that easy. Sure. All you have to do is effectively find a Lotus Petal on a child, right? Exactly. Or, or three mana in Tomb and Shallow Grave. Oh, okay. You can also yeah. reanimate. With a Dark Ritual available, sure. Mm -hmm. And so once Child's in play, uh, you can pretty much activate Gristlebrand all the way down until you can't anymore, and then do that again. Right. So I had, um, at one point I ran Laboratory Maniac in the deck, because it's, it's trivial to draw your entire deck. Uh, this tournament, I had a sweet interaction where I drew 64 cards in one turn. Uh, so he had a Ley Line of Sanctity in play, and he surgically extracted my Dark Rituals. Okay. So the only way for me to net mana was to crack Lotus Petals for mana, Cabal Therapy myself, naming Emrakul, <laughs> shuffle in my library, and draw it again. Okay, okay. So there's all sorts of awesome interactions with this deck. Uh, so the one Emrakul, obviously you have the ability to, uh, at instant speed, put it into play via you know, a Vengeance or whatnot, uh, but you do actually have the ability to cast it as well? Looping or no? Uh, not cast it, not really. I've never cast it. Okay. But that would be it, it's a, really a little impressive. <laughs> yeah, really. I, I guess theoretically, yeah, I could. I've never had to, though. Um, it, it's mostly used as, yeah, attacking for 21 and uh, shuffling in your library. Okay. You need to do that. Like if, if the tendrils is on the bottom six. Sure. Uh, and then transitioning to the sideboard, obviously, Emrakul can be a little bit useful there as you move into uh, show and tells. I assume primarily to evade graveyard hate and still kill them the same way. Exactly. Uh, but the alternate kill is still available, of course. Definitely. Uh, beyond the show and tells, why don't you go for the rest of your sideboard? Because several of them appear to be like specifically anti hate cards. Uh, some of it's like actual hate on others, like extirpate. Mm -hmm. uh, where exactly are you bringing in each of these cards? I guess. So, against green black decks, they really usually don't have graveyard hate. So, I only bring in two Python Needles and two Chain of Vapors okay. because you never know what they have. Uh, Python Needles shuts off Fairy Macabre and Death Rite Shaman. Um, against white control decks, they give you a lot of time, so I like to bring in the, sh the show and tell package. The show and tell package is, uh, is... More rituals. Right, more rituals so that you can hard cast Bristlebrand. It's not that hard if you have threshold. Uh, show and tell, a couple of chains, a couple of needles, and the Limdol's Vault to try to find the pieces. Okay, so you actually sideboard it very much into like a kind of a different style. What are you bringing out? Uh, do you bring out the reanimator or do you try to... Uh, no, when I, when I side into show and tell, I usually take out all the... everything but... A couple of reanimates in case they just Sure. Yeah. Okay, that makes sense. Uh, so beyond that transitional package, you also have uh, an additional Echoing Truth to function as, I assume, just a third chain of vapor with a different name? Or? Uh, it does that, but it's also really good in Chalice. Uh, okay. Chalice is usually set on one, so chain of vapor is handy against that. All right, all right, that makes total sense. Uh, well, the extra pay was just because the meta seemed to have a lot of reanimator re this weekend. Okay, well, uh, I have seen a few of them out there. Not too many. You're one of the, the few still doing well in the tournament, I think, that I've seen. So, congratulations, Greg. Thank you. Uh, good luck in the rest of the event. Thank you.